Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. It's a lovely day in Canberra. It's a terrific day in the health portfolio and in government generally. Today at Government House, the Prime Minister and I welcomed Ken Wyatt as the first Indigenous Australian to be a member of the Executive Council. And uh, Ken will be assisting both Senator Fiona Nash and I as Assistant Minister for Health. Uh, it's really terrific to have someone of Ken's background understanding, not just as an Indigenous Australian, but as a West Australian, and most importantly, I don't want to call you a health bureaucrat, Ken, but when I first met you, um, it was out in Western New South Wales, and it was at a medical centre opening, and you were um, managing the administration of that on behalf of the New South Wales government. So we, we welcome your expertise. We are delighted to have you. Uh, we have, as everyone knows now, aged care added to the health portfolio, back in health where I think it belongs. And uh, we will all be very busy very soon. So Ken, if you'd like to say a few words uh, and then we might take your questions. Uh, thank you very much, Minister. It's an incredible privilege to be invited by the Prime Minister to serve within the health portfolio. My background in two states has been around health and health care, but in particular Western Australia, the focus has been on aged care with constituents within my electorate. But more interestingly is the looking at service delivery so that we give all Australians a world-class health service but within the framework of the directions that we're setting as the uh, government. And I look forward to working in a team of three where I admire uh, both the capacity and the way in which Minister Nash and Minister Lee works and in the way that they are, they are consultative uh, with key stakeholders. And I think that's all good well for uh, the quiet work that we're doing to achieve the outcomes that are required for Australian health. Thank you, Ken. And uh, I think as a hallmark of that consultation, I'd like to just make a few brief remarks about Medicare. The Medicare task force is well and truly underway. And whether you agree or not with the comments that were made throughout the Four Corners program, what came through very strongly is that the system urgently needs a review. And I'm delighted that clinicians, doctors, patients, health professionals are all coming to us through that review with their thoughts, uh, their ideas, and their very good ideas about how the future of Medicare should look. So um, it's terrific that this important piece of reform is well and truly underway. And we know that Medicare as it stands now is not reflecting what is happening in the operating theatres and consulting rooms across Australia. Um, Thirty odd years ago, the technological innovation and interventions that exist now uh, were nowhere to be seen inside the schedule. And while things have been added and items have been added, uh, we're going to bring some coherence, some structure, some meaning, and we're going to reflect what happens, and we're going to give ourselves the scope to add new items. Ken, as a West Australian, and Senator Fiona Nash, as the Minister for Rural Health, understand only too well that telehealth, reaching out to people with the uh, variety of conditions that, of course, they experience in rural Australia in the same way that they do in the cities, uh, the, 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 the use of telehealth into the future um, is going to make a real difference. And I know that as we revise the MBS, those items will certainly be to the fore of my interest. But again, this isn't the Department of Health, this isn't politicians telling it like it needs to be. This is doctors and the profession telling us. So thank you, and both Ken and I would be delighted to take your questions. Uh, what, was the, uh, what was the logic, um, given Ken's experience, and rightly or wrongly, some people will be asking, why wasn't uh, an Indigenous man of Ken's experience given responsibility for Indigenous health? Well, I want to make it clear that Ken will be advising us on aspects of health delivery and health service delivery to Indigenous Australians. Absolutely. There are no sharp lines between how we relate to patients and to the Australian population in our responsibilities. Um, I talked to Ken and his input and advice on Indigenous health matters will be welcome. But 
uh, he has a background in aged care and a great interest in it and that's not something we want to overlook. Mm. Mm. Now, so from my perspective, Indigenous health is a key component of the work that I'll do but there is much to be done in aged care and I certainly want to turn my hand and knowledge and experience to assisting governments in a direction that provides for all Australians and I think that's an important element. Plus the other uh, part to this is that I've worked in Indigenous health and it gives me great experience to then be able to influence other sections within the health portfolio. So again, as a member of the executive team and as a member of uh, the health portfolio, I want to contribute to all areas as I work within a team of uh, two highly skilled and experienced ministers who've made a tremendous contribution so far. Mr. 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 Why, was, um, why was aged care omitted from the original um, ministry that was announced by Malcolm Turnbull? Uh, well, it wasn't. What's happened is that aged care migrated from the health portfolio under previous machinery of government changes into social services. Some important reforms were done, and I must say done very well, by my colleague Mitch Fifield. Uh, those reforms have been set, they're on the rails, and uh, we will monitor them as we go forward, making sure that older Australians have the care, the understanding, the choice, the compassion where needed as they get old and frail that the health portfolio can give them and it absolutely makes sense for another machinery of government change to take place and for aged care to come back into the health department. Well, what, what, was what, what, was the argument, what was the argument put forward to moving it back into the health portfolio? Common sense. Uh, it makes sense. It's, it's as simple as that. And that remember, decision? it was in the health portfolio for a long, long time. When was that decision made? Because, uh, you know, if that decision was made when Malcolm Turnbull formed his ministry, why were you not sworn in then a week ago? Well, I make the point that Ken was actually not in the country at that time, so um, he was leading a delegation to the US. He wasn't able to be here. He returned. We had some conversations. I asked him what sort of work he'd be interested in. We're talking about a few days here. I don't know that um, absolutely outlining chapter and verse, the uh, sequence of events is particularly helpful, except to say that uh, we have a focus for aged care at the Cabinet table, and I'm delighted with that. Mr White, can you say what the big challenges are in aged care? Obviously, the ageing population is the thing, but what, what, what are the, the faults in the system at the moment, and where do you think you can do better? Actually, I think the faults in the system have been addressed in different ways and the work that's come out of the Productivity Commission report has helped reshape. And certainly Mitch Fifield, my colleague, has done much of the groundwork and I work very closely with him in, within my own electorate. I think the, one of the key things we've got to think about on a life continuum is the health of all Australians from the years of birth through to our final years of life. And I made reference in my maiden speech about recognising those who we deem as elders and those who are seniors, and that we need to accord them the levels of support and intervention in order to give them quality of life. And I certainly will be focusing on the health journey and looking at the re arrangements that exist across the nation, build on the work of Mitch Fifield, which is an extremely solid foundation and then tweak those areas that we need to do further work on. My, one of my first tasks will be to visit some of the aged care facilities back in my home state initially, and then certainly meeting with stakeholders within the aged care sector. Mr Wyatt, could you walk us through um, the actual way in which the Prime Minister made his offer to you? Uh, there's been some reports that it was a bit of a technical nightmare on his behalf. Well, it was, because I was uh, leading it as part of a delegation to the United States of uh, backbenchers and I was between Los Angeles and Sydney, about halfway, and I got tapped on the shoulder, uh, woken up, and the Qantas uh, customer manager said, I'm sorry to wake you but you need to read uh, this printout. I read the printout. It was surreal so I reread it <laughs> and then she said I need an answer from you so I said it's an emphatic yes. I then signed the second slip, dated it and said please convey back to the Prime Minister my acceptance of a, a key role within his government. So, and it, and it was surreal, just it reminded me <laughs> of 
what I'd seen in movies. <laughs> so we can understand why Mr Wyatt might not have been appointed, uh, why, might not have been sworn in until later, because as you say, you were in the air. Um, but why wasn't an aged care ministry announced in the first iteration of the cabinet? I, I, I'm interested in your question, but I don't, I'm a little bit bewildered by it. In the previous government, we didn't have a minister with aged care in their title. We had a minister for social services and an assistant minister for social services. Everybody knew that the assistant minister, Mitch Firefield, was responsible for aged care. In uh, this government, uh, under Malcolm Turnbull, everyone will know that both uh, I, as the senior minister at the cabinet table, Ken, as the assistant minister with particular focus on aged care, Fiona Nash as the rural minister understanding rural aged care will all be very much involved and contributing. The sector has said that it's not enough just to have a, a, a minister, minister dedicated to this area, there needs to be an overarching strategy. Is, some, is that something that you will consider pursuing? Well, of course there's an overarching strategy. That was set with um, Mitch as minister with some important reforms which give older Australians choice and focus on where they would like to be and empower them as managers of their own circumstances, not saying, here we are, uh, you know, you will live in a residential facility and it will look like this. Remember, very, very few older Australians actually live in residential aged care. Uh, let's work out ways to recognise the joy of being an older Australian in, in, in today, um, the contribution that Australians of all ages can make and celebrate the longevity, the happiness and uh, all of the good things that go with it. I know when my children and your age group grows up, uh, they will add so much in terms of digital transformation to their lives we need to recognise and respond to that and pick that up as well. So this is a very forward-looking portfolio. But do you envisage any changes to the government strategy now that ageing is in the health portfolio? Uh, there will always be changes. As Ken quite rightly said, reforms that have been put in place may need tweaking. Um, that's always the case. And uh, the conversations that we will have around the Cabinet table the input that we will have not just from members there but from the backbench generally will inform policy that you know is always improving. Uh, that's a good thing. That's something we, we need to recognise. We might just take one more question. So just Thank on you. The MBS, it's, there's a lot of evidence and obviously it was raised on, on Monday night um, that there is areas where we can trim costs. Um, it's early days obviously, we've got a task force looking at it, but are there areas that you are in favour of um, you know, trimming back these costs, for example, you know, should GPs be able to refer um, to highly expensive and technical services, um, you're just looking at chopping certain things off the schedule, what, what, are, you, what are you looking at? This is, not, this is not about chopping anything off the schedule and the um, terms of reference that are available on the Department of Health's website describe exactly what the task force is doing, how they're doing it, how they're engaging with clinicians and doctors, and make a really clear point that a savings target is not in scope. Of course efficiencies will be realised, but um, uh, this would not be a process with integrity if I knew what those efficiencies were and I knew what they might look like. I'm really enjoying the debate that's been created, the input that's coming from everywhere, and when the task force reports to me towards the end of this year with what they believe the scope of the task is and what might make sense in the early days and what might make sense later on, uh, we'll consider it through the processes of government. But uh, again, I'm delighted that Bruce Robinson and his team are in charge of this and they're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy for you to take that. It's an incredible privilege. I, I think that there's, there's a couple of things that ran through my mind when I was asked. One was the fact of our heritage counts for all of us. And in my case, having been offered a position uh, from the Prime Minister was uh, extremely special. But I also want to be judged on my capability, capacity and knowledge and my contribution to the portfolio, but to all Australians. And certainly I know that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people will be immensely proud, and, they, and many will still continue to reach out and ask me for guidance and advice, and in working in the team that I'm in, 
then we will be able to respond to their needs based on what we have to consider. But no, it's an incredible honour and it's a great privilege. So thank you. Thank you all. Hello, my name is Michael Keating, Editor-in-Chief and Publisher of Inside Canberra, a leading business and policy newsletter and journal 